be advised that the views and opinions of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Hi, my name is Harry Tambuatka. I am not Larry Bruhard, but yes, this is Corporate Social Responsibility. Now, what do we do in this show? Basically, it's called For the Common Good or What is Good for the Public. Ladies and gentlemen, the topic for this program is going to be understanding restoration. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? In the past week, we have seen the devastation uh, the earthquake has caused in Bohol. We have seen a number of churches that have come down that have been up there for close to two, three hundred years. There is talk all over the city and all over the broadsheets. What are we going to do about these churches? Let's rebuild them, definitely. But why? How? How do we go about this? There's even talk. And an amount that was put out, no less than the president said, Bigyan natin isang dan million mga yan, para maayos yan. But the questions that need to be answered are, one, should government build it? Should government fund it? Or should the church fund it? Should the, gov should the church put it all together? After all, bahay simbahan. Now, hang on. The way these churches were built two, three hundred years ago, the capacity that they are now absorbing is 20-fold, 50-fold, if not even 100-fold. Nindi nagkakasya mga tao sa simbahan. And yet, tatayo natin ang parang nindi sila makapasok. Napakaliit. And what is the function? Isn't the church the people, not necessarily the steeple? Parang ganito. These are all the different questions that have to come into mind. But then I realized, gee, how do I understand restoration? What do I know about this? Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us a formidable guest that has come from the Heritage Conservation Society. His name is architect Manolo Noche. Uh, he teaches at the UST and he's a man of many expertise. He's written books and uh, he's very academic as well as practical on the job. Thank you very much for being here, Architect uh, Notch. Thank and you, Harry, for having me. Yeah. Um, alam mo, like I said, I'm having a hard time, but since I had you on radio this morning in DZRJ, I learned a lot of new things. And my position, my bias before our show this morning was, wag natin bigyan ng pere yan. I'm talking government to give to church. But maybe let's help our viewers understand what we talked about and how this whole thing happened. Please explain to us the concept, the meaning of, because you brought those words out, restoration, reconstruction, retrofitting, and construction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe you can identify again. Yes, yes. Well, for the purpose of our viewers, uh, restoration basically means that we are putting back what may have been lost or what may destroyed. have been missing or destroyed in a structure that is, to a certain extent, relatively still whole. Okay. Reconstruction, on the other hand, is bringing back what is totally gone or destroyed. So from zero. From zero. From zero. Yes, up. yes. So broken, partly broken. Partly broken is restore. restoration. Uh, like if you take a look at some of the to churches. To bring back yes. to original. Yeah, if you take a look at some of the churches in Bohol that was destroyed by the previous uh, earthquake, yes. there are some there that falls under the category restoration. Yes. Then correct. there are certain churches there which fall under the uh, category reconstruction. Because, uh, the rubble is now. Because the rubble is, is not on the floor now. Yes, the, the rubble is basically just dust, and there's really correct. nothing there. And stones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas the others, on the other hand, majority of the structure still stands, but a certain portion of the building collapsed. Correct. So because uh, well, the majority of the building is still there. We need now to retrofit whatever is left. Okay. Retrofitting means to... Retrofitting means to make sure that the building can withstand another natural calamity uh, mm. in the future. Because Improving we take a look the... The structural integrity of the building. The integrity. Okay. Yes, because we take a look at the, the buildings were built 200, 300 years ago uh, using a technology that is, shall we say, relatively medieval. Yes. And in today's modern architecture and engineering, these are already relatively obsolete mm -hmm. in terms of materials, in terms of how they were built. Which, is, which, which makes restoration more difficult 
than just retrofitting. Because you're trying to bring back using the old technology, not yes, necessarily. Yes, restoration or reconstruction is a little bit more difficult because we are trying to bring back as well the ideal or the method of how the building was built in the first place. Because at the end of the day, we're looking at all of these buildings as our, uh, our legacy mm -hmm. and our patrimony. And uh, when we talk about patrimony, that means these are our inherent uh, identification. identification Ident that yes. was brought down from generation to generation to generation. And these include methods of construction, materials, the processes, the crafts that were involved in building all of these things. Maybe it's easier if we go back a, a couple of steps back then. And you can help explain to us, after all, you are with the Heritage Conser Conservation Society. Yes. The importance of these relics, these churches, these old buildings, help us understand why and or what role they play in society and history. Yeah. And in society, yeah, in okay. society. Yeah, well, you know, the, the fundamental role that they play, of course, in terms of the day-to-day -day lives of the people within those communities is that it is a house of faith to a certain extent. It is a Simban. church. Simban. Okay. So they use it every day for their daily prayers or at least weekly for their weekly yes, prayers yes, or what yes. have you. Beyond the act of faith that is being undertaken in these structures, there are also these uh, symbols of faith that is involved with the structure. The symbols of faith basically boils down to the building is located in a particular locality and then that right. building has been there standing for numerous generations to come and uh that plays a role history, an it plays a role yes, significant yes sense. because this is the building wherein you go to church to this is the building where you were baptized this is the building where your parents went to mm -hmm. your grandparents and if you even if you're not a catholic for that matter this is the building that you pass through day to day in you your life yeah. uh -huh. it becomes your landmark uh -huh, so your this landmark. becomes now in the, uh, you know in our town we have this this right. is the most photographed building in your community. In short, this is the identity of your town. Right, and because it right. is an identity, it is what makes you who you are. It is what makes your community, your town, who they are. It is what makes our country what we are. Without this, we have no heritage. Without this, we have no identity at all. So, you know, when you ask people, so what makes you Filipino? <laughs> yeah, when, if you ask people what makes you Filipino, well, uh, what we're going to say, we have SM, we have Jollibee, is that Filipino? Uh, and then, it's and not, then, uh, it's not. If you ask, say, the yeah, church, if, you ask, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you ask a Chinaman what makes him Chinese, he'll probably say, Great Wall of China, Chinaman oh, Square. No, no, um, good point. Good if point. you ask a, a, a Parisian what's make them, what makes them uh, Parisian, they'll say the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, Eiffel Tower so the these, Lourdes, are, yeah, these yeah. are visual remnants of the past that we still see day to day today. So you're saying it's an extension of one's identity as a national of a specific country. Yes, yes. So it's an extension, you cannot take one away from the other. No, you cannot. You know, this is again, as I said, what makes us who we are. These buildings were built first and foremost by Filipinos. Mm -hmm. So Under it's not a frivolous representation of just faith or no, community center? No, no. No. Uh, you know, as I said, there is the act of faith and then there is the symbols of faith. The symbols of faith that these are the, peop the people who built this during yes. a particular time of, of uh, the history of the community. And the reason why this building is still one way or the other adored by the people within those communities is because of their living testimony or presence of that structure within that community. A testament of your history, your past, and further back, yes. 300 years. Yes. You know, one may, not, one may not necessarily be conscious of the fact that it's there. But then ask the people within those areas now what they miss most in their, in their town square. It is that structure, structure that has been there standing day in, day out during their living lives until this tragedy occurred. Now, putting Bohol aside and looking at the country as a whole, the, uh, the nation, we have, you have identified at least the Heritage Conservation Society. Yes. You have identified specific buildings and structures, mm -hmm. am I correct? Yes, About yes. which should be retained or uh, made sacred, so to mm -hmm. speak, that mm -hmm. we cannot mm -hmm. use these mm -hmm. all over the country. Well, to a certain extent, a law has been passed recently declaring that all buildings, regardless of what kind of function these buildings are, that dates 50 years and older is considered heritage. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason for doing this is because there is just a rampant amount of demolition that's going on due to the ad 
adverse commercialism, commercialism and, and pace and growth the country is experiencing. And as long as property is looked at as, as raw material for development, these buildings of the past are now hindrances to growth for most people. How do you identify what, oh, so 50 years is one. Yes, 50 years is one. Then if you go to a little bit more specifics, you could probably say what makes them heritage or historical is the fact that number one, it is, aside from age, yes. it is involvement, in short, what kind of activity happened in that building that mm. makes it significantly important either uh, uh, internationally mm. or nationally or locally. Mm -mm. So we could probably say internationally that, you know, a special event, that, uh, the Edsa Revolution is an international event that, Correct. that one way or the Correct. other made these areas now important like historically. That, 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 that mall. Uh, yes. that, that, that and then you have that, now, say, a national importance like Rizal may have stayed there during his lifetime. So that makes the structure now an important uh, backdrop to this event. And then it could be a local event, it just the community is important, uh, it's the, the structure is important to the community. So it could go down through various uh, stages and various levels. Then you also have historical importance because of probably the aesthetics involved in the building. It's such an unusual structure that mm -hmm. the beauty of the building is incomparable to none. Uh, uh, the new modern designs will not... Ito, yes, ito, history, yes. Well, if you take a look at a mall, a mall is basically a box within a box and in a box. You know, you've seen one box too many. That's yes. It. Yes, yes. But then if you take a look at an old building where in the craftsmanship and the style and the manner of the, the degree of detailing that the building has is relatively unique and therefore that makes the building important. It may not necessarily but that uh, an important event transpired mm -hmm. there, but just the creativity and the craftsmanship involved in the structure makes it significant. Well, where do you draw the line, for example, with older buildings that have outpaced or uh, its capacity is yeah. no longer there? It's 12 stories, you're, you're in a high density area, it's, it's high value per square meter, and you have a 12 story building that's getting old, and beside it uh, you have 50, 60 stories mm -hmm. coming up. Mm -hmm. Where do you draw the line between a building whose structure uh, it's obviously magnificent in its time, yeah. but it has been frozen in time, and then uh, whereas the functionality of the building has depreciated, be it its sewer, its, mm -hmm. its wiring, yeah. its, its, its uh, plumbing, etc. Well, you know, there is a paradigm shift that needs to be looked, up, looked into, especially by the developers and similarly by the local government uh, within this, where this building's jurisdiction lie. These buildings offer one thing that modern infrastructure don't, and that is character. So <laughs> you're so right. Yeah, go ahead. It yeah. has character, so whereas right. the others is very generic. You know, you may uh, you may have it's worked, a functional. Yeah, yeah, you may work in a functional building that is clean, that is modern, that is. But then, clean and modern can also equate to sterile. In Correct. short, there is nothing there that sort of like gives people... We're talking about Singapore? No, yeah, <laughs> it, gives, it gives people... It doesn't give people this feeling of romance in wanting to come to a particular place to work. Mm -hmm. Now, you said yeah, Singapore. Yeah. You take a look at Singapore. Singapore has the modern side, which is very sterile, and that's where you'll it's probably very, find... All the malls. That's where you'll probably find this quintessential aspect that Singaporeans don't smile. And then you have the more <laughs> historical side of Singapore, yeah, where you have all the old buildings and they're painted you know, that's, in very colorful pic, uh, two, paintings. Two, three story, no more. And yes, and the, the people there look very happy. The so bagay, it, it uh, provides you with the kind of psychological feeling that you live in a, a building that has character. It, remember, buildings are like clothes that one wears, mm. except instead of wearing a building, we work inside or live inside one. Mm. Now, there are people who live in very beautiful antique residences or modern residences that's filled with beautiful stuff inside. That's Whereas true, there yeah. are some people who prefer to just, or happy, who just live in a box and just as, and long, as, plastic. as long as they sleep and as long as they take a shower and as long as they eat, they're happy. They're so what you're saying is it's, it is imperative that we maintain our heritage. It's not a matter of subjective choice or no, okay, I'm going at it. No. You're saying it is important because it is part and parcel of who we are in yes. the community. Yeah. Even though mo modernity set in, it can coexist one side by yeah. side. You know, mod history basically tells us who we are as a people, where we, where we have come from, what we are today, and where we'll be going in the future. Through all of these old buildings show one thing, that the Philippines, in its very colorful history, was 
was and hopefully is still a very rich cultured nation. We are. That is what's, this is the representation of, of who we, we are, are today, as a people from the past. From the past. Because uh, if you're going to compare modern architecture nowadays, as I said, they're modern, they're functional, but there's a little bit of sterility involved in it. Mm. It, it's, it is devoid of a certain sense of culture. Mm -hmm. These buildings are something that you could find anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. But the buildings of the past are built for the Philippines, by the Filipinos, in our particular culture, climate, historical setting. Mm. And we cannot lose this. So it is not up to government or even the church to say, no, no. We replace that. We get a new one. It's not even no, up to them. No. It is a responsibility of the people and the leaders of the time yes. to maintain. It's the responsibility to the country. It is the responsibility of everyone involved that these buildings are preserved and are conserved because these are what we will leave our children for them to be able to appreciate and then brag about to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Remember, this is our identity. And there is consumerism even in heritage. Oh, yes. As you definitely, said, as you mentioned definitely. this morning. But tourism, definitely. the magnet, the attraction. You know, tourism is the second biggest industry in the world. As long as the world is at peace, yes, tourism yeah. is the biggest. You qualify that. But yes, tourism is the biggest money-making industry in the world. And as long as you have very good spin doctors, mm. you could sell almost anything to gullible tourists who mm. visit this country. And Filipinos travel a lot. And they, yes, go, they go to Europe. And why do they go to Europe? They go to Europe because they want to like, take a look at all of these buildings. And on top of that, after looking at a wonderful palace or a wonderful castle or a wonderful Gothic church, they go shopping. And where do they go shopping? Right beside this the building. Buildings. So the real attraction is actually the culture, the buildings, the heritage. Yes. You're not going to a particular place just to shop and then see nothing. Correct. So tourism does promote consumerism. Yes. And one requires the other. One requires the other. Indeed, wedding. And you mentioned, um, you mentioned a nice example this morning, the radio show. Why, uh, for example, uh, Disneyland, how it pales in comparison when it was uh, operated in France. Yes. Because why look at the, the, the nice fake uh, villas yeah. when in Europe you can actually see yes. the real villas yeah. and the old castles which are real. Yes, yes. So why go to Tono? Why go to Europe and go to a mall? You yeah. go to Europe to see... Yeah. Actually, that is the major problem that a lot of our foreign tourists would say when, when they come to the Philippines, that they will always be brought to a mall. And, you know, <laughs> when, so you, when you meet, I, I have uh, Balikbayan friends who, who would complain that the, the families would, send, will, will bring them every day to one mall to another mall. And they would always say, does this country have nothing else to offer but malls? There you go. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the bottom of the hour. Now, before we go... Um, the question that we need to tackle next, or not the question, the issue, is act actually understanding the concept of restoration. Restoration because these churches have come down in Bohol. What to do with them? These are two, three hundred year old churches. Para sa atin yung mga hindi pumunta doon, parang ah, baliwala. Ako personally, um, I was initially very biased, and I was thinking, na, dapat yan simbahan, kanila yun eh. But then again, I've come to realize the responsibility towards these structures and these buildings, our heritage, falls on our leaders, not necessarily just the faith. Now, they may be the, the priests and the pastors within inside them, and the functions may differ slightly or be improved or if not even be expanded. When we come back, we'll discuss these issues and exactly understand, should we restore? The answer is yes. How do we restore? Let's find out. How much should we put out to restore this? Let's try and answer that as when we come back.